organ transplantation is the topic we have today okay so i'm just going to give you a brief uh brief history of the organ transplantations you know you know the first uh, uh successful kidney organ transplantation was uh, done on 1954 okay and it was uh, done in the boston okay and it was done among the uh, two two um, identical siblings okay they are monozygotic siblings you know before uh, many people have tried transplanting one organ to another one but what happened was they were not successful you know they were able to connect the vessels and all this uh, anatomical structure but it it, it it most of the times it's reject and they were thinking why it's rejecting and at that time we didn't have a good understanding of immunology okay so people they tried uh, transplanting but it didn't work so what happened was uh, when they tried transplanting the kidney and the monozygotic twins in uh, 1954 at that time they were able to successful so that's because of that's why uh, it was the dr murray uh, who who lead the transplant team and he got a nobel prize for that also okay he was uh, rewarded with the nobel prize and, uh, and and there was also lots of things happen okay and 19 uh, uh, transplantations really pick up after the invention of the cyclosporin okay because the immunosuppression and then uh, it was uh, continue okay if you see uh, here i will show you my here slides here okay that one that was mala mali over the bodu gar virus okay uh, here you have this giants of transplanting transplantation people and uh, you know it was uh, year 300 okay long time ago long time ago you know there is a interesting history of transplant also uh, there was this uh, camos and domina elo transplantation you know what happened was uh, uh, at that time it was a war time you know 300 times you know century to 300 is a long time ago you know it is the first decade the first century and uh, that time there was a person who was uh, injury he got a uh, he got his in the, in the middle age the, the leg of the uh, one guy his name is uh, dracon justinian was amputated to treat the cancerous lesion he had a cancer you know so it was uh, removed and the leg of a recently slain ethiopian more gladiator was retrieved from the battlefield and transplanted to the amputated site <laughs> that was an interesting story you know because they they try to you know uh, got the leg fresh leg from the recently slain amputated uh, uh, this is called gladiator and they try to transplant it you know, okay okay on that leg Uh, twin arab brothers so she from the bladder field transplanted to the amputated site cosmos and domian it, it was the that, that that the doctor's name cosmos and domian twin arab brothers who were converts to christianity performed the operations they did the operation of course it didn't work because that time they didn't have any immunological work up they didn't have broad grouping so uh, you know i cannot imagine how it works and uh, that's an interesting story here and uh, you know the first successful bone transplant was done by uh, van mineren okay and van mineren uh, 1666 the 6 december uh, it was a dot surgeon he was a dot surgeon and he became a surgeon in amsterdam in 1635 he saw uh, he saw uh, a great interest in hand surgery and interesting in demonstrating a flexor tendon repairs on corpses by one of his pupils he wrote a book which gave a good representation of the state of the art surgery in the 17th century in amsterdam so that was the the one history about the bone graft okay and still in the history okay the first successful cornea transplant 
it was you know it was by edward jim okay it was 18 march uh, 1863 okay and uh, he was a austrian guy vienna and the day jean first met man blinded in both eye called glogar okay at the same time a boy was brought to his clinic after an accident that left metal piece in his eyes okay the attempt to save boy's eyes was unsuccessful john inoculated them and saved the cornea for transplantations into glegor eye although complication affected on eye on the other remain clear allow glegor to return to work so it was uh, successful that's why it was the first successful cornea transplant was done in 1863 almost 300 years ago okay by edward john we call his line of john right there was a one anatomy structure so because of him so uh, with regards to kidney transplant it was done first successful kidney you know many people try kidney transplant even russia someone try to got the recently died person kidney and he connected with the leg thigh but it didn't work but the really the 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 the, the tipping point of the pioneer was it was the uh, dr harrison and dr merrill and dr more there are three people who did the first successful kidney transplantations and this team led received the 1961 emory prize and america academy of arts and science for bridging kidney transplantation the old okay these are the and uh, dr mure and the first successful kidney transplant between identical twins he shared a nobel prize in physiology or medicine in 1990 and in 1971 dr harrison received the parkinji medal from the czechoslovakia in may 1983 he was awarded the kais medal from the american association so transplant kidney transplant was uh, basically done in 1954 among the twin brother and it was successful because of that one dr mure and his team received the nobel prize okay so the 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 secret of that success is because they did in the identical twin you know identical twin they have a genetically all the genes are matching so that time they didn't have to worry about the immunological problem you know in transplantation or surgery itself is not the everything okay there are lots of things going on because you are transplanting one organ to the another body so you have to think lots of things because nobody wants to have a foreign body in your organ right you want to dispel that thing so uh, that's why also uh, you don't want to have the foreign organ in your body and for that you need a, now what we are doing is because of the invention of the very nice immunosuppression we we are able to transplant nowadays okay i'm still on the history side okay okay and the first uh, successful pancreatic transplantations by richard and william kelly it was done in minnesota usa pancreatic transplantations it pancreas along with kidney and duodenum was transplanted into a 28 years old woman and her blood sugar level decreased immediately after the transplantation but eventually she died 3 months later for pulmonary embolisms 1979 the first living related partial pancreas transplantation was done so pancreas transplantation started around uh, you know 1979 it's not it was not that long okay and this is a very interesting guy he you have a uh, uh, valdormic okay petrovis dominikov he is a uh, uh, he is a russian guy and he try a lot of things and uh, during 1916 to 1998 he lived a lot longer and he has lots of uh, work in the field of transplantations because 1937 he did the, the first artificial heart 1946 he did the first heterotrophic heart transplantations 1946 he did the first transfer complex heart lungs 1947 he had the first isolated lung transplantation 1948 the first liver transplantation mm, first liver transplantation he is the one okay 1951 the old first orthotopic heart transplant was done 1952 the old first 
mammary coronary bypass surgery 1954 the first transplant second aid by the way when you say first heart transplantation it doesn't mean that he did the transplant but doesn't mean that patient survive okay he tried okay at least he tried so this russian guy is very interesting and uh, the world first successful um, human to hearing heart transplantations okay it was the christian natling bernard 1922 to september 2000 he he lived up to 1992 to 2001 he was a south african guy cardiac surgeon you know you have we must you probably must have seen that picture the first heart transplant picture there is a one surgeon waiting for the patient and there was another his assistant was you know lying down in the floor because of the tiredness they, they did the three three days continuous how many hours of 28 hours more than operations and that was very famous uh, uh, pictures you you probably might have uh, seen that pictures and this is the guy his name is christian natling bernard he is a south african and he did the world first successful human to human heart transplantation okay okay and uh, another one is you have here the first successful live donor partial pancreas transplant was done by david in southland okay it was his name is david and the first successful ovarian transplant was done by dr pian mathra oida hospital india it was done in india okay first successful ovarian transplantation okay india also did register the first success, successful transplantation of total near total area of face face transplant you know it was done by in usa by maria sabinovo okay she did the first successful face transplant so you know this is the history so by history what do you have learned people are trying to transplant uh, your you know um heart lungs kidney cornea skin bone marrow bone lung, you know pancreas these are the things which can be transplanted okay so when you say what are the things up to now you know we are transplanting we are transplanting cornea kidneys skin bone marrow heart and heart valves intestine bone lungs liver and pancreas these are the organ which can be transplanted okay so also you know in the organ it was the heart kidney thymus liver lungs pancreas intestine in the um, tissue it can be bone bone can be transplanted tendons can be transplanted cornea skin of face okay heart valves okay those things can be vein can be our skin of leg or vein so many things can be transplanted okay so when we talk about transplant there are a few things okay like there are words you should know auto autograph allograph isograft and genograft you know you know what are things this means what do you mean autograft you know somebody have a bond you have a bond in your in your one chest and there is a lot of surface area open so you want to cover that one so how do you do that you will get some skin from your thigh or you know and you transplant that skin to that bone surface that is called autograft okay you guys can hear me anyone say hello please yes sir yes, yes oh, okay. sir okay if you have any any questions just let me know okay you can interrupt me i want you to be a interactive session so that you know just listen to me so this auto what do you mean auto auto means transplant of tissue to the same person sometimes this is done with tissue surplus tissue or tissue that can regenerate or tissue more desperately needed elsewhere example include skin graft which i already give you or vein extraction for cabg you know uh, you know cabg cabg is coronary artery bypass graft you know the cardiac surgeon when you have a triple you know coronary artery narrowing what do you do you do a cabg okay coronary artery bypass graft nowadays we don't do that much before we used to do a lot before because nowadays there is a strain all these things but 
before we used to do a lot of uh, uh, coronary artery bypass graft surgery and there what we do is we we extract the vein from the saphenous vein and we use that vein as a i know jump graft you know we use that vein to instead of coronary artery we use that vein to supply different part of the heart so because of that we call it this is also kind of transplant autograft okay sometimes an autograft is done to remove the tissue okay and then treat it to the person before returning it okay stem cell autograft or storing blood in advance of surgery you know it sometimes you remove your blood like two pints of blood you remove it and you go for surgery and if you need a surgery at that time if you need a blood you can give it that is also we do that is a very good do if you said the you know blood because you don't need to blood from other people you know why you gonna need other people if you are going for surgery what you gonna do is uh, you give your blood ex- in advance like one month before if you are going for elective surgery by the way and uh, when you need it during the uh, operations you can get your own blood so that is also a kind of autograph okay and uh, in a uh, uh rhinoplasty joint distal use or replace the more proximal one typically foot or ankle just also bone also we do a uh, uh some kind of uh, uh bone uh, remodeling one bone to another one so that is called autograft you know i think you already have a good idea of what is autograft is it is basically autograft is uh, uh, uh autograft is uh, basically taking your own body parts to another one okay what about the allograft and second one is allograft you know allograft is a transplant of a organ or tissue between two genetically non identical member of the same family species same species okay so what do you mean by non identical member okay the most human tissue and organ transplant are allograft just say we i mean kidney transplant garchau ni ek jana ko aama le chhora la dincha dai le bhai la dincha bhanesi same species ha but they are not identical member okay they are a same species human but they are not identical member okay identical member bhaneko ke bhane feri tumro feri monozygotic twin hunu paryo ni testo haina tumra ko genetic difference cha tara they are same species most human tissue and organ transplant are allograft due to the genetic differences between the organ and the recipient the recipient immune system will identify the organ as a foreign and attempt to destroy it okay cause in transplant rejection the risk of transplant rejection can be estimated by measuring the panel reactive antibody level so in allograft we are always worried you know because it's not the same person organ it is somebody another human being but same species it is still there is a some differences in uh, genetic makeup so definitely your body will try to reject it so that's why we have to give the immunosuppression medication for life on this kind of test okay this kind of surgery so allograft you know the routinely what we are doing nowadays the transplant it is a allograft okay allograft transplant because same species but genetically non identical member okay so what do you mean isograft there is another word autograft allograft and another one is isograft this isograft is something special this is the one which they did first kidney transplant among the identical twin so it's a subset of allograft in which organs or tissue are transplanted from a donor to a genetically identical recipient when you say genetically identical recipient who can be it can only be happen between the identical twin okay isograft are differentiated from other type of transplant because while they are anatomically identical to allograft they do not trigger an immune response you know they have a same genetic profile in in monozygotic twins so they don't need any immunological pro, uh, you know response they will not have uh, generate any immune response so this is good that's why this become successful because of the isograft in the first transplant because they didn't have any idea about immunological rejection anti rejection medications everything they didn't have any idea even just 50 years ago we didn't have any idea but that transplant became successful because that time they did in isograft so that's the interesting so how about genograft 
I think you understand geno means transplant of organ or tissue from one species to another species. Okay. And the example is that some heart valves transplant from one to humans. Okay. So there are many things people have tried. Okay. Like fish, uh, you know, fish to non human primates, you know, and so there is a lot of interest in this. Uh, uh, type of uh, transplantation genograph. You know, if you can transplant the, uh, let's suppose, um, pig uh, leg, pig kidney to the human, why we have to uh, cut the another fresh human being to get a new organ? So, but definitely nowadays our immunology is so strong. If you transplant that, it will just uh, immediately it will go rejection. You know? So. We have been successful in times of controlling a rejection in a yellow graft, okay? One human to another graft, another human. It's just, despite all our medication, we were, our medication were able to hold that kind of response and manage, control. But a genograph is still, we aren't able to do that because it, it will generate really a vague and very profound immunological response, we, which we don't have medications to mitigate that kind of uh, immunological response. And immediately kidney will, uh, any organ you transplant it, it will just destroy it because of the uh, immune response, okay? So these are the things. So what is, uh, I will, let's talk about the, you know, in, in transplantations, there are two things. Somebody has to donate and somebody will receive. Okay, so the person who donate, we call it donor. The person who receive the organ, we call it uh, recipient. And the organ which we transfer, we call this graft. Okay, graft. Okay, so these are the terminology you should know. And uh, there are uh, two types of donor. Okay, you know, let's suppose in the liver or may suppose liver or uh, lungs and heart, you know, if I want to donate my heart, either I have to die dead or I have to be brain dead, right? Otherwise, how can I donate my heart or my lungs? Maybe lungs, one part of the lungs can be donated, but heart, not possible. I have to die before my... So there are a certain type of donor which can only be retrieved from the brain dead donor, okay? And uh, other... Sometimes we, every day we do is, there are many donor which are living related to the living donor. So there are two types of donor. One is uh, living related, living donor. It means, let's suppose the father wants to uh, give his kidney to his son or mother wants to give his kidney to his son, you know, other brother, each other. So these are the living related donor. So what can they give? especially they can give their own kidney because they have a, another spare one. They can give the part of their uh, uh, liver because in nowadays we are also doing a lot of uh, living liver kidney transplant also. So you just remove a part of the liver, it will regenerate again, okay? So these are the things can be done by related living donor, okay? But uh, what do you mean disease donor or brain dead donor you know, this brain dead donor, they are person, typically what kind of person are the brain dead donor? You know, it's, it's, it's like this. If you die and if you have no blood circulatory supply, then your kid, your organ will destroy with you. Okay. And you will not be a appropriate candidate for donor. So what kind of person can give after death? Okay. So there is a special term is brain death. You know, so what is brain death? I think you have to let me think about this. When you say brain death, I will give you a scenario. Who are the ideal candidate for brain death? You know, those people who are riding motorbike, when you are riding motorbike, the sports bike, maybe you among have some sports bike. They are very fun and, you know, going very high speed, adrenaline, you know, drip. What happened? They suddenly, let's suppose in the in front of Kist, uh, you are drive, driving the sport bike, you know, you are taking the override the uh, one truck and you got an accident. Suddenly you got an accident, severe accident, you got a head injury and they will bring you the Kist Medical College Emergency Department. And what happened is uh, 
uh, we will there there is a uh, lots of medical personnel there and people th that guy has a uh, started brain swelling he has difficulty breathing so the emergency personnel they will put him in the ventilator so he he was in ventilator he has a head injury but he's a uh, lungs heart kidney it's fine it's, there is no injury he only has a head injury so if you have a head injury your heart does not need a head okay your lungs need a your head here because your respiration is controlled by your pores okay so if you have a head injury but for you you cannot you cannot um, control your breathing because if you have head injury and if you have uh, no uh, brain activities you will die because your respiration will collapse but you know remember he was put in a ventilator so if you are in a ventilator Uh, there is a, a like a artificial ventilation so uh, that artificial ventilation will help you but your heart is perfectly fine so what will happen is uh, even though you have no brain your brain activity is gone but you are still alive because your life in a sense that you are still your heart is beating.